Welcome to Working in Academia with Josie Rothery from Leeds Beckett University. Hi Josie, welcome. Hi Jamie, thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, before we go into your work in uh, academia, uh, prior to this you were a construction manager. So what initially made you choose a career in construction? Um, I think predominantly I like being outside. I didn't fancy a job where I was sort of stuck inside and doing the same role or the same thing day in day out um, and also I had aspirations to travel I had spent my, my father was a, he's a diplomat so I'd actually spent a lot of time abroad um, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed traveling and yeah. with the construction industry there's that opportunity to travel yes. um, and I always liked a bit of a challenge I wasn't the most academically bright I had to work hard um, for getting to university um, so I guess I like the challenge and I also like solving problems. Right. So how long did you actually work in the construction industry for? Well, I'd like to think that I'm actually still there. I know that I'm working <laughs> yeah, in academia. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, the, the great thing about the construction industry and the built environment is that it's, it's so varied in the different roles it offers to people coming into the sector. Yeah. Um, and I'm still a problem solver it's just that instead of working on construction sites I do it in in academia teaching undergraduate yeah. and postgraduate students yeah yeah so what made you then decide you wanted to work in academia when you were working on site and you love the outdoors so it was a, a <laughs> bit of a, a, a life progress really right. um, my home life had moved on I had got married and um, I had started a family and the uh, demands, the time demands of working um, on a construction site and the very uh, geographical location um, meant that I couldn't commit full time to being a site manager anymore. Right. But I'm so proud of being an, an engineer and in the construction industry, I didn't want to just do something completely different. Yeah, um, yeah. So I kind of thought, well, what could I still do? Um, and get a bit more flexibility around um, the role that I want to do. And um, I, I ended up speaking to a colleague and he suggested that I look into teaching. Right. So um, I spoke to someone from the university and, you know, the stars were aligned and it just so happened they were looking for someone to teach management right, yeah, at, at yeah. university and, and that happened to be me. <laughs> yeah so obviously it's a, it's a big change being on site and that now obviously working indoors at university did you find it easy to adapt uh, I mean you're right it was a it was a massive change um, and it did take me um, a little while to adapt but there were aspects of academia that I just really enjoyed straight away and uh, the, the main part of that was the student interaction and Right. being able to take the 10 years of experience I had on construction sites and say no this is this is actually what it's like yeah and, yeah yeah um this is the, the good stuff about uh, working on projects um and and the challenges that you come across on the, on a daily basis so I, I really liked that part of, of it but it um you know it, it it takes you a while to settle in yeah um but it's it is really um it's really good it's yeah. really fun yeah so obviously now you're the course director for msc uh, civil engineering at leeds beckett um can you tell us what what it's like to actually work in a university yeah so i mean it's um it's it's fun it's fun it's a big <laughs> campus it's not like working in a, a secondary school or a primary school your campus is big our campus yeah. is split over um two locations um you're constantly going from one building to another um, there's a, a lot of students that you interact with, um, from part-time students to full-time students, and of course, of course, they're across the, the whole of the three-year groups. But then you've got different academics that you're working with as well, um, and it's just it's it, what university allowed me to do, or going into academia, yeah. was take a step back from that really frantic. Um, project environment that you work in on construction sites which is great yeah. and just get a real good sort of wider view of the industry and right. think about you know sort of get a better understanding about all the other things that are, are happening in the industry from from research um, all the way to sort of new technologies 
and what other projects are going on out there. Yeah, because obviously working on a, a construction site, you're, you're actually at the sharp end, aren't you, of construction? Whereas you, you live, academia is you completely breathe, different. And you work one yeah. project <laughs> yeah, until right, yeah. it gets to the end and yes. you move on to the next one. Yeah. But yeah, being able to take that step back was it was just fantastic. And it yeah. and it almost made me enjoy being an engineer so much more, knowing right. that there was just so much more to engineering than just just projects. Yeah. Um, you know, like you say at the forefront there. Yeah. So what does your job actually entail? So Predominantly, I teach. Um, well, I, uh, predominantly, I, I do teach. Um, yeah. But with my course director role now, I also manage the course content. So there's a certain uh, number of topics that we have to cover at university. Um, that will be things like uh, structural engineering, um, understanding more about how fluids and water works, understanding about soils and foundations. Yeah. Um, so it's making sure that they are taught in the right way and they're taught um, uh, consistently across the number of years you're at university. Um, I also have a fantastic role in bringing industry and academia together through promotion of our courses, yeah. making sure that I get people in um, who are working professionals to speak to the students. So it's not just us saying this is what it's going to be like, but yeah. people bringing their real life experiences into it. Um, we get to have a look at the skills that we're asking the students to learn. So um, we might be looking at new software applications uh, because um, uh, industry wants students to be able to be proficient at certain skills. Yeah. And we can bring them into the course. Um, and then also sort of research inquiries. So making sure that we're still taking the knowledge that, that we're sharing in the industry, um, generating you know, uh, conference papers, uh, generating uh, documents in which we can share that widely back out to industry and we can yeah. learn from it. So I think, you know, we are a sort of vehicle for industry to come to for us to be able to, to develop new guidelines, uh, new best practices and to send that out again and see how that works um, in practice. Yeah, so there must be a lot of collaboration then with industry that, that you do to make sure the course is aligned with industry and people, uh, the, you know, the graduates go into industry knowing what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. We can't, you know, it's, it's no good to anyone if you teach someone for three years uh, and that content is rubbish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, we need to make sure that the people that are coming out the other end are employable yeah. um, and they have current up-to-date knowledge of the industry. Yeah. So I imagine there's uh, lots of careers for engineers within uh, academia. Uh, could you tell us what opportunities uh, would be available? Yeah, I mean, so the, the, the easiest one is the teaching side of things. So yeah. you could come and you could teach the students about uh, a range of topics, um, anywhere from, uh, you know, understanding more about concrete to understanding about management practices, uh, to using digital software to create 3D models of buildings and then understand how those buildings perform in terms of the, the heating and the cooling and the ventilation systems in them. Um, there's also um, opportunities to do the research and that's taking questions from industry. Um, how do we make something better? Yeah. How do we stop people doing something? Um, and we then take those questions and we form research um, uh, research projects around them and then we can test them and we can yeah. test them in materials labs we can test them physically um, or we can test them by going out to industry and asking people to give us their opinion um, yeah. about what's going on and, and what things might change or, or what things you could do differently um, to make something better so, so if, 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 say, for instance, uh, somebody had a degree in engineering and wanted to go into teaching, uh, like, like yourself, would they have to then take an additional course, like a teacher training course or something like that? Or, or is, it, is it quite seamless? Um, for civil engineering, and in fact for a lot of the built environment courses that we have, you know, the, the basis of, of knowledge, um, it can only be matched with experience. And I think that's really important. So the way I came into the university into teaching 
wasn't because I had a teaching degree. It was because yeah. I had experience. Um, once I came into academia, I then um, did my fellowship at the Higher Education Academy, right. um, which just recognised that I had developed enough skills um, and uh, knowledge and experience to then be able to, to teach. Right, and that, okay. that gave me the recognition I needed. Right. Now, I think if you were going to be going into secondary or primary school, you, you might have to have a teacher training yeah, qualification yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or something equivalent. But again, you know, the, the training part, the, the theory part is, is a fraction of the really important experience yeah, that yeah. you need to be able to do it, you know, yeah. to do it properly. So. so what sort of person would like to work in academia? So I think, you know, trying to remember that academia is, is almost two pronged. There's your teaching side and there's your research side. Yeah. And, and you could be two different types of person depending on which side you're on and there's not many people that, that can do both equally um, somebody might prefer to be more researchy than teaching but obviously if you're more teacher orientated you know you, you'd probably be someone that would want to be able to, to work with people you can yeah. be quite outgoing quite social be really passionate about a subject and want to share your knowledge with them help them develop new skills and new connections. Um, and if you're looking at more research-based, um, that would probably be more about somebody that was really good at sort of collecting information and yeah. figuring out solutions, um, getting facts and piecing the information together to be able to come up with a, with a solution. Um, and if you are research-based as well, you, you might find that you're actually quite um, interested in a broad range of subjects. And again, you know, the environment, it's not just about one profession. It's about yeah. lots and lots of yeah, other yeah, professions yeah. working together. So you'd, you'd be investigating things. Um, you'd be quite inquisitive. Um, and you'd like to do lots of reading, maybe, and, and, and look at puzzle solving and, and concentrating on specific areas. So yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of all sorts. You know, there's, there's definitely a role for everybody in academia at university. You don't have to teach. You can just be a researcher. That's fine. But if you like the teaching and the research sort of supports that, then that's yeah. brilliant as well. Yeah. So what are the challenges of working uh, within academia? Uh, some of the challenges are you've got to be prepared for big numbers of students. Yeah. You don't just have one class of 30. Uh, this year I was teaching 150 first year students. Right. Okay. And I'd say that there's challenges around engagement, making sure that they're all listening to you, <laughs> yes. uh, which they don't always do. Um, but the best way you can do that is just to show your passion and yeah. to make sure that they understand that, you know, you believe that this is, you know, a really, really good career yeah. and not necessarily just a career, but the skills that you get from uh, the teaching is something that you can put into practice across a huge set of different roles yeah, in the yeah, industry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's probably the students are definitely big numbers of students <laughs> and getting them engaged is, yeah. is something that I still have trouble with sometimes. Yeah. So what's what's on the most rewarding part of, of your work? You know, I remember that first email I got that said thanks, you know, and it yeah. was from someone that I might have seen from their first year all the way to their final year. And then something dropped in your inbox, like, you know, a year later, oh, I just meant to say, yes. thanks, you know, I just thought of you the other day and if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have got this job and it was this that you said. And, and that's really rewarding. And I mean, I'm working now with um, graduates or, you know, alumni yeah. Um, who are now looking after other students at university. I've got right, a meeting yeah. next week with one of my ex-students that he's now, you know, working for a big civil engineering infrastructure firm. Yeah. And he's looking after five students who are at our university. Right, um, okay, yeah. And I yeah. think that's brilliant. I yeah, really do think that's yeah. brilliant. So, um, and another great thing at the moment is the degree apprenticeships. And I yeah. think that if, if people don't know about degree apprenticeships or apprenticeships, level two three four six it's really important to have a look at them because there's yeah. so many opportunities 
um, to, to get more involved in um, uh, the built environment industry without having uh, necessarily the cost of going to university um, yes. and also getting that really important experience alongside the teaching. They're fantastic yeah. students, the degree apprenticeship students. Yeah. And yeah. I, I do plead that every, you know, it's, it's, it should, it's an opportunity for all um, and we should be pushing apprenticeships more. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us uh, about the research that's been carried out uh, in your area at the universities? Yes, yeah, so we've got some great research going on. We're, um, we do a lot of research around recycled uh, plastics or how to recycle plastics. Obviously, there's a big problem at the, at the moment of plastics contributing to, to climate change and, and other um, environmental issues. So, you know, we're, we're trying to recycle plastics in concrete. We're trying to recycle plastics in, in roads as well. We're also looking at um, using digital technologies to um, uh, make automated systems, if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. we're trying to use uh, technology to create uh, like computers that can do the same sort of thing as, as almost humans can do by putting sort of parameters in place so they can make right. decisions. So we're not trying to get rid of people from the construction sites but we are looking <laughs> at where we can automate things right. um, a little bit more and there's yeah. a lot of opportunities there um, and I think that's great and we're and, and it's also feeds in a bit to our um, AI research which is the artificial intelligence research yeah. Yeah, and yeah. people just don't think you know they see a road and they use a road but there's 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 so many things and people and processes that make up the, the management, yeah. the design, the management, the operation of that road. And there's so much opportunity to bring in things like uh, use of drones, uh, use of automated software as well to try and help us manage that, that system more effectively. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, finally, um, obviously for the, for the younger people uh, watching this, um, have you got any interview tips? that you would give somebody uh, young who's obviously not had many interviews, not had much experience. Have you, have you got any tips or tricks that you, uh, that you could share? Um, I would take into the interview something that you are just really proud of. It doesn't have to be to do with the subject that you're talking about in your interview, just something that you are proud as punch of and right. makes you really, really pleased um, to talk about. Um, I would also take in something about a problem that you might have solved, you know, yeah. if you can show that you can solve a problem um, or, or even lead a team, you know, a sports team or, yeah. um, you know, a, a, a different team, then, then that's, that's really good to see. Um, and then just finally, especially for our industry, we work with so many different people. If you can communicate and you can be part of a team, yeah. then you are perfect for the built environment <laughs> industry because yes. that's what it's all about it's about working together and making sure that we're all going towards the same goal at the end of the day yeah so right. team working yeah Josie thank you so much for your time not a problem Jamie thanks so much for having me thank you